I'm going to say good afternoon in French, although I have been asked to speak in English. So what I want to say is um, the 19th and 20th century enterprise is rigid, formal, hierarchical, secret, authoritarian uniform. The 21st one is open, agile, creative, project and process oriented, disruptive, collaboratively, community driven. Notice that here we have the vertical and here we have the horizontal. Vertical hierarchy, authority, horizontal openness, diversity, community. And this second form is much more adapted to a complex environment, and the 21st century environment is very complex. We know from biology that complex evolutive systems have three poles, diversity, interdependence, auto-organization and inventiveness, and to survive, these three poles have to work together harmoniously. And we also know, because of the latest studies on neuroscience, that life uh, rewards the best combination between individual creativity and cooperation. And that the plasticity of the brain is very important, and the brain can be educated to go from an individual uh, system to a collaborative one. What does this mean? In the old system, we had one leader, an individual leadership role, a leader who was charismatic, visionary, passionate, and conventional, etc. In, new, in the new models, we have pushed collaborative leadership, shared, distributed, complementary, co-creative, all the cause. We are in the and paradigm. We have to have and individual and cooperation. This way, thesis, individual, antithesis, collective, cooperative leadership, towards an evolutionary co-leadership model which adopts the two in a harmonious way. That's the new leadership. In fact, we are looking for an exceptional team an exceptional team is made of a small group of people with complementary skills we, who share a common goal and a common method of work, have a feeling of mutual responsibility, are committed to the development and, su uh, and success of each and all, and produce results that are outstanding, that are exceed all normal expectation. And that's the organizational block of today. Of course, if you are a, a very big company of uh, thousands and thousands of people, you can all only have the small teams. But you can have a very flat structure where you have the upper management with the principal functions and the BUs. And underneath that, the people that really do the innovation, the creative, and all the works are those small teams that function through this co-evolutionary leadership project. So Favi, in the late uh, 80s, had a CEO called Jean-François Zobrist, and Jean-Francois had the following belief. He said, there is no economic performance without happiness. So he decided to change completely the way of managing his company. And he said, well, I want to have mini factories. Mini factories of about 25 to 35 people each factory. And each of these mini factories worked for one sole client. And how was it organized? Well, it's what's called the F-form, the free-form enterprise. These, the operators in the mini factories elected 
one person to be their leader, and the leader was one of the operators with experience and natural leadership. And this man was the sole person to speak to the client. For example, you had uh, uh, the mini factory Peugeot or Ford or Maserati or what have you, and he spoke to them. And no one else in the company spoke to the client. And on the other hand, this person, this leader, decided on recruitment, on holidays, on organization, on creative uh, workshops within his mini factory. And that's the first generation of F-form companies that existed since the late 80s. Favi. F-form organizations, employees have complete freedom and responsibility to take actions that they decide are the best for the enterprise. Which means the people who run these companies think that people are intelligent, creative, and will do the best for the company. Now I have to talk about another company completely different, which is WL Gore. Maybe you have heard of Gore because of Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is an advanced material. Well, Bill Gore used to work for a very big company called Dupont de Nemours, which is an American chemicals company, very traditional, very hierarchical. And Gore, Bill Gore was not happy there because he thought that there were many opportunities that the company did not exploit. Many new materials that should be produced and sold. Other marketing techniques that they were not used by Dupont. And also, he took the carpool to go to the company, and he noticed that employees, whatever their level in the carpool, solved a lot of problems. They had ideas, they had creativity, but they did not dare talk about it to their managers. So he said, I'll create WL Go, and WL Go will be a company uh, based on the following beliefs. Freedom, free, complete freedom of employees to create, to have ideas, to formulate their ideas. Fairness, everybody should be treated equally. And fairness also meant that everybody at Gore is an associate. There is no hierarchy in the sense that the structure is a lattice. A lattice, treillis in French, means that everybody in the company has freedom to communicate with everybody else. It's a kind of big network. And finally, commitment and respect. Commitment means that there are no assignments at go, but if you commit on doing something, you have to do it the best you can and finish it. And finally, I said respect. Respect in the way that you are allowed to take risks at go. But if you take a risk before taking the risk that could damage the company, you have to ask your associates if they are agree on you taking that risk. So that's go. Go. The problem with uh, there's no it's not a problem, but many people who have to want to work with go are very lost in the beginning because they come in the company and say, who is my boss? And people tell them, but there is no boss. You do not pronounce the B word here. No boss. Uh, you work with a team or with many teams. You choose your team uh, because maybe you are attracted towards a project more than another project. Uh, and but if you are in a team, you have to finish the, assign the, the work you are, you are committed to. So the system at Gore goes that way. You have a sponsor in the beginning, and the sponsor uh, leads you 
all over the company, and in 18 months, approximately, you understand the culture and you can operate. But there are some people who cannot, and those people are not made for Go. There's a company called Zappos, maybe you know about it. It's in the shoe business, internet, and now it's a subsidiary of Amazon. But Zappos had the following system. Instead of hierarchy with a CEO, upper management, middle management, supervisors and staff, it organized in circles. For example, marketing would be a big circle, and in this big circle you have sub-circles, for example, digital advertising, and you also have roles. A role, for example, could be social media producer. And to understand even better, you have roles, and a role is not a task for a person, it's something that, that can be filled by several persons, or even better, one person have, can fill several roles. The authority is distributed, uh, there are teams and there are roles, and decisions are made locally. Uh, which means that if things change, if roles change, if uh, the demand of the market changed, structure can, ch can change very rapidly. It's a very flexible model. And also, rules are transparent, which means that Everybody from the CEO to the mere employees know the rules and respect them, and they are visible. To be compared with a traditional company with job descriptions, delegation of authority, reorganizations from time to time, strict office politics. So that's holacracy. Hello everyone, I'm delighted to be here today to share with you what happened at the Bishvila site. We, we transformed the culture of plant number six. This all began in November of 2014. We launched a, a project destined to bringing everybody together around a shared ambition. Now, what ambition was it? Was it? With everybody's commitment, we wanted to embody excellence and industrial progress by 2016. And we called this project Vision Plant 6 2016. And in order to realize this, we launched three projects. First of all, attitude and well-being. What will make people want to come and work in Plant 6? Trust, respect good working conditions, and um, managements that can, that can motivate people. Then, efficiency through lean. How to be agile and how to solve problems quickly. How to improve constantly. How to develop common standards and aim for excellency. And then, finally, innovation. Why? Because it is necessary. This isn't specialized innovation, but innovation that everybody can use, for instance, in the field of problem solving. It is a breakthrough and it is meaningful for our plant. I won't go into the details of the three projects or the results, but I wanted to tell you more about what it was like from the inside. We, we worked on four cornerstones, if you like. First of all, the cornerstone of culture. Culture enabled, a, enabled us to really put in place sustainable changes. We, we trained our collaborators in lean culture. Newcomers as well as people who had been with us for some time. In October of 2016, we organized an E-Day with workshops on specific problems within the plant 
and how we could solve them creatively. So we had guest speakers and we worked on problems we encounter on the ground with innovative solutions. The second cornerstone was processes. Why? Because they determine rhythm and quality of work. And there we developed 13 common standards for the plant. For instance, um, how, how do you pilot a production unit? We have now standardized this for the whole plant. For instance, we also have a standard for factory visits, explaining how they should be carried out. The third cornerstone, personal development. An essential step for that was that if we wish to grow together, then once a year the teams meet with their managers in order to define rules within the group. That is the first step in order to ensure that the group has a, an identity, that the rules be shared by all. And it's a wonderful opportunity for learning, for problem solving, for improving things. And this all contributes to personal development, as does recognition, acknowledgement of people's individual achievements. And the final cornerstone was tools. Now, they are mentioned last for a reason. Very often, we tended to use tools and solutions before we asked ourselves the right questions. Of course, we have uh, lean tools, creativity tools, innovation tools, but it really is the last step. We need to ask ourselves first what tools we need. So what did the vision project achieve? I want to share two figures with you. First of all, 591,000 euros of income over two years. And the second figure is 6,000 ideas for improvement that have been carried out. This is a 50% increase compared to the previous period. And more generally, the Vision Project has given us a common culture, common standards. And we were able to uh, create connections between people that did not use to work together, establishing a real dialogue between the various units and services. So what now? It was announced that Vision would be over by 2016. So what we did is that we, we fostered all this energy that was unleashed in order to, uh, to give this project a future. So we asked ourselves how. We decided we needed a long-term approach, coherent with the 2020 project, of course. We wanted a, a humane approach. This is a vision we constructed together with all our colleagues. We identified what we needed to move forward. We need to ask why before we find solutions. And then just getting off your seat and solving projects. We used to have a, a top-down approach, but now after vision, we have a grassroots approach here you see the uh, Equilibrium Plant 6 project. And we no longer have a deadline. This is now part of our DNA. And what we do every day at Plant 6 becomes part of the company culture. The main idea here is to have balance. Balance between the framework, our framework of rules, and connection, attitudes connections between people. And we need both. This is a balance we need to find. And for that, we need to ask ourselves, what about meaning? What is the meaning of what we're doing? What is our aim? Is it sustainable? Is it for the client? Of course, we have indicators. The idea is not to uh, go into details, but this gives you an overview. I 
wanted to share two short-term changes that we were able to achieve. We launched this follow-up project in February of 2017, so it's quite new. The first of these changes was the well-being indicator. In every unit now, we ask ourselves, how did our day go? Did it go well or not? And if it did not, then we need to do something about it. The second change is this little pebble, which is now our number one priority. This little pebble, what is it? When you're walking and you have a, a little pebble in your shoe, it bothers you, so you, you stop and you look at it. So we now currently have 15 projects around these little pebbles, which we defined in an autonomous way. That's what I wanted to share with you this afternoon. And I, I hope uh, you now feel motivated to come by the Bischwederplan to see what we're doing there. Thank you very much. <laughs>